It is actually, they've set the MP Necrophos heading mid based off of uh, their assumption that it will be the Ember and they will be correct. And that was the or maybe other they think it's the PA. Hmm. We ace on the PA and now this is going to be fought as Ember Spirit instead. The battle begins. Yeah, be uh, a little bit more of a playmaker style. More of that, like, super active mid one, perhaps, than the uh, high octane damage. I mean, I guess the, the playmaker is very high octane, too, but, you, you know, you wind up with an A on just some games versus a Mjolnir. Mm -hmm. But uh, we'll see. We'll see where he winds up in this game. Able to pressure Isis Ice into the level one swashbuckle as he was making some lane rotations. And they're going to wait for him because they know he wants to come down bottom. They're going to make him walk the long way around. This is pretty nice. They've got the high oh, ground agreed, advantage as well. Dude. He's a couple like, of love taps. Serious. <laughs> Could you not? Oh, uh, and he's the TP bot if he wants to get there. In fact, Sox is already TPing to the top lane as uh, the long walk there from Ace means they missed it on quite a bit of XP. PPD kind of hanging out mid, throws some damage into MP, but then Ice 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 rotates over and is finally able to make his way down towards the bottom lane, if that's what he wants. Actually heading back towards mid, just trying to keep MP safe from harassment, and will finally TP down bottom. Uh, that's Abed, I'm sorry. So full lane rotations now. AM yeah, we are all over the place. Way down bottom, and the Pango will head up top. Man, no complaints from DJ. What, what a hero to get a free couple of waves on, eh? The Coddle, straight off the start. Very nice. Yeah. Absolutely. So currently the Dyer still have their TPs. If they want to mix these lanes back up, they can. Uh, I guess both supports did TP though, it's the only problem. So uh, Ace, even though he's been up here the whole time, is kind of stuck despite saving his TP with that walk. So it, it's almost like he wasted the fact that he didn't TP for that first wave because he can't make the rotation either way because of his supports losing their TPs. Well, and now we'll see DJ TP up towards the top shrine. Maybe Just go in for time a stack. For a stack. Yeah. Looking TV the uh, connects them both. Should be able to. See if he gets it. This guy has like the longest leash at camp. It is so crazy. Oh, what? I wasn't yeah. even close to the shrine. Oh, my bad, other casters. Ice Ice able to swash Buckle back to safety. No problem there. Is now Coddle just comes in. Yeah, why don't I clear out this pole camp? You know, no big deal. The nuisance Coddle. That's what I like to call this. Matt grabs the wave. Kills the small creep. And uh, do they have the shards? They they do if they want them, but he's going the long way around, which should keep him alive. I'll just ditch the creep wave to keep alive. Ango should be okay here. He'll kind of get sandwiched, but nice and mobile. Jumps back to safety. His XP's not looking too hot, though, is it? Oh, there we go. Follow Ace is into it, too. He's pinging the shrines. <laughs> So how's this mid laid? Ember on Necro. Dead even. 14-2 on each. Just uh, just hanging out, you know? Small edge for the Ember, it looks like, uh, in terms of experience. I think uh, MP had a couple of leechers in those first few levels, but... Yeah, he did. Very small edge. Ice just hanging around, basically, but uh, yeah, relatively even. Uh, and uh, It is Radiant side for the Necrophos, too, so he is that camp that he can potentially work with. But this ward helping a lot too, just to make sure that Fada doesn't run into any problems if it ends up on uh, MP's high ground. Definitely a disparity in the off laners here, though. The Doom having a presence in that lane and Ice Ice Ice. Unable to do much with this Pango. He's been able to survive, and I suppose you could call that a victory, but you can see these supports pretty unrelenting here and keeping him pretty far off the creep wave. Meanwhile, Doom down bottom, intercepting this pull from Jabs, almost level four. He's feeling pretty all right. Yeah, and Sox is going to come up here and be like, what is this Coddle doing? He's going to see all these stacks, and he's like, hmm, what do we do about this? I mean, the Ember is definitely a hero that can contest these. They might even steal a couple. Yeah, PPD is just going to throw out the, uh, the stroke of fate here, and they're going to take themselves a couple ogres. Not too bad. Oh, DD for jabs. Forced to use the Scorched Earth. Something that a lot of Dooms don't really like leveling all too early. Yep, going for that I think he point just in skilled blade. that. Yeah, I think, I think he just took that so that he could survive here, so he really needs to make sure he survives. And it looks like he'll be okay. Good. Jabs is going pretty deep, but... <laughs> Tries a stick drop. You know, maybe that could tease him out, but he's not going to fall for it. Lane Fada takes some damage from the Necro. Still a very even mid matchup, and all the while up top, 
Ice 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 with a TP from the tree line, knowing his limits, just trying to survive. And DJ is about to clear up a nice stack here. This is pretty slow because he only has the one point in Chakra. And he even has a retreat from the five minute bounty. Ouch. And they're coming in here. They're just ignoring the runes, making sure that he can't get a stack off. So DJ real upset at the moment. And trying to finish off a couple of these creeps. Looks like they'll get the Wild Wing. Just maybe Ice 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 jumps in, hits the shrine, grabs himself a little bit more mana, but I don't think they'll be able to pursue for a kill, especially with Fada nearby on the low ground. Not going to pursue. The Fada just got a regen rune and then a bounty rune as well. I'd say he's feeling pretty good returning that mid lane. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, there's the, the benefits of Radiant side, right? This lovely camp for the Necrophos. That sure is something. Oh, wow. Not sure how that's still uh, a A couple thing. of golems there, too. Yeah, that's real nice. We need like a cliff here or something. I don't know. Bottom tower is under attack. Camp is just uh, way too good. So 3-3 has just been everywhere, man. He's, he's done the walk back. He went up top. He's in the jungle. Now he's back defending his tower, and he's level 5. Although Jab is only level 2. Oh, my God. He's so close to level 6. He just needs one creep. They could brain sap this creep for the XP, honestly, and get this kill. Hmm. No, not quite. Back to farming we go. Six minutes, no first blood. Game of farming. Level sixes have come out in the mid. Necro actually skipping his ult. Grabs that third point in the heart stopper. Yeah, no rotations for him this game, right? You have a Coddle that's farming very greedily, and you have Jabs that's just stuck on 3-3, three, three, and well, probably in the grave here. There's a couple heroes around. Yeah. Ice Shard's going to make that one difficult, and Fada will venture his way over for a first blood. 300 oh gold for him. That was first blood. Making that rotation worth it. I kind of, I didn't even realize that there had actually been no kills this whole time. It's been yep. a, a slow burn. And for that last game, both teams just taking it steady, stacking up. PPD taking some damage here. Actually clipped by the Illuminate as Ace jumps back in. It's a level 5 PA, a lot of damage onto this Pangolier, and that's going to be the end of him. Ace dings level 6 and gets the second kill of the game up for NIP. Well, things starting out uh, pretty well for them. Already got a slight edge on the net worth. Of course, they always have to be thinking about Abed on this Annie Mage. The old uh, ticking time bomb here. And I wonder what Ace is going to go for this game. He hasn't queued anything up. I have Inkswell. I have Doom. I have Ember. I don't think I want a battle period this game. But uh, then you run into the problem of like if if you do don't go battle fury and you you know lose or come out just a little ahead in the early game you're going to be worried and you're going to start throwing bodies at high ground and what are you going high ground into keeper of the light and pango that's a little scary like yeah. they can just clear the wave so hard and yeah ace cues it right up I, I think you are kind of forced into this battle fury it's like in a vacuum i really just want to start slaying people with inkswell and playing with my doom and my ember but in reality it's going to be so hard to push high ground that the risk is just too great to not go Battle Fury this game. I would agree. I think PA is one of those carries where if the situation is right, it can absolutely be the right item because sometimes she needs that accelerant through the mid game. A lot of times kills aren't even enough where if you get a couple of kills, you know, you're five, one and three or something. That's where the other team starts to clam up, play a little more defensive and it gets way harder to keep up that momentum. With the Battle Fury, you can get those kills and then if the other team plays defensive, you've just got more map to farm and your economy is healthier than ever. Uh, looking like a go on the jabs there in the mid, but not going to be a kill for NIP. Either way, with that uh, early kill in this kind of space in lane, PA is off to a great start farming ahead uh, of the anti-mage so far. Yeah, and she has the Ember, right? Like, Fada's job is basically to be that uh, mid-game playmaker and someone who's actively involved in the fights. So that, that's what you would be looking for if you went for this, like, Deso Vlad's build or something on the PA. Mm -hmm. Couple remnants just chilling at that camp there. I don't know, just one remnant, one really wide stanced remnant as uh, PBD will hang out around it, it's kind of threatening the fact that his Ember could show up. Leeching a uh, little XP here from this level 8 Necro. Holy Locket. God. Up first item. <laughs> yeah, the uh, locking into Greaves is uh, something else, man. Radiant's this Necro just becomes unkillable. You know, I actually kind of forgot about Holy Locket. It's been yeah, a while since I've seen somebody buy that thing. It's uh, pretty much just Timber and Necrophos, really, that pick it up. Okay. 
not a whole lot of heroes just jumping to do it. But uh, it's got a great build up for Necropost to get your arcanes, and then you disassemble for the uh, the locket, and you go back for more arcanes, go into your greaves. Mm -hmm. Definitely an item that feels like it was kind of designed for Necrophos. Can't argue that one. Well, Ten minute bounties. Ace was uh, not on point there, and not five of the best. So he didn't get over there because he's gonna be zoned by Ice Ice, who's still level four, but able to threaten with the help of his friends, and uh, they will get both the bounties up top. But likewise, bottom are taken by NIP. And the recurring theme here for the bounties. Jabs now in the mid. Nice ice shards to block him out. Nightmare onto Soxa. Might buy him just enough time to survive. And a death pulse from MP will help pick him back up. And again, no kill for Nip here in the mid. Jeez. Peter has been level three for like five minutes. Ever since they got that kill on the Pango up top, he was well, one, one, one. Four. Okay, he just got, he just got four. All right, fair. <laughs> but uh, so right after that top play where they missed the double down, he ate immediately TP bottom. And he was hoping that someone would TP and try and stop 3-3. But uh, once that wasn't going to happen, they just pulled the wave into the camp. And now he's just farming that all up. Yeah, both supports uh, on the Radiant having a slightly better go. Coddle getting a lot of space. And they've actually given some room to Bane in the mid so that he could get some extra experience. And he'll now hit level 6 as he consumes the Tome, it looked like. Bean's grip online. Maybe looking for a setup. Uh, on to PPD. Some rotations from both sides now. NIP in the jungle, they find Ice Ice Ice, but he's able ice to make shards. it away. Ice shards, and he'll just jump Ooh, right the over. tree! Cut the... I guess he had to cut both anyway, so he was just kind of screwed. Well, I will say, uh, DJ, probably a little disappointed he couldn't hold his tower much longer, right? Uh, but they have a really good reach with the PA, especially in the early game, because he doesn't have that blinding light, so he should be able to hold this tier 2 a little bit longer than the tier 1. Uh, like, this is kind of his home now, right? And you can see Ace is really wanting to go for this instant kill. And uh, Doom has the pack leader aura too. It needs to be a little careful. Doom level uh, past level six has the ultimate. Also a Midas, so now Drum of Endurance going to be on the way for him. Actually working on a pretty decent economy as an off laner, just barely behind uh, that of Fada on the Ember Spirit, who's also working on a Drum of Endurance. It looks like. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Gonna be a double drum kind of game. Oh yeah. Playing the bongos. Mm-hmm. War cry. Yeah, get in their heads. Yeah, we'll see if uh Potty even finishes them, honestly. But I mean what else are you gonna buy, I guess, in December? Doesn't really need to use this game. Oh, mid lane. Looks like some initiation on the Ember Spirit. Fiend's grip gonna catch him into a Reaper's Scythe. A great combination of ultimates. An easy kill for Fnatic. They'll get them themselves up on the scoreboard. A nice kill on the enemy mid lane. I do wonder if it's going to be an A on this kind of game, though, because <laughs> it kind of feels like one of those, right? Fiend's Grip, Scythe, getting dunked by the AM. I mean, that yeah. mid one build has certainly uh, paid off before in the past. Mm -hmm. But uh, it all just depends on how farmed you wind up after like 20 minutes or so, which path you end up taking. 3 just straight up walks into Abed in the mid lane, who misses the, uh, the counter spell. Oh, actually, it probably just doesn't even work, right? He, he tried to use it, but I guess they took away the bonus resistance. So there's no real point. Maybe just worried about a potential doom. Mm. Or PA anything else that he might have had. Having this, like, temporary window of godlike power. Power treads just right into the demon edge. Hitting very hard for this stage of the game. Able to skip the regen pieces. That kind of speaks to how little pressure has been on the, the PA now. Yeah, very true. Eight or nine hundred gold ahead of the AM. It's pretty nice at 13 minutes. Max farming, especially because the AM has been sharing his jungle at least a little bit in the early game with the Caudal. Like he had some stacks made, but then he just takes them all. Yeah, and like vice versa, right? He's been forced into the Perseverance first, which makes sense on AM. I don't think there's there's anything wrong with that, but you know he needs that regeneration. Can't really go for that Demon Edge first. Oh, goodbye wave. DJ just blasting him down. Already has his glimmer, so he's very survival by himself. I'd like to see some dust picked up soon. It's already queued on Soxa, so he's got it on the mine, and Peter gonna have to grab some too. Holy Locket now out on the Necrophos as we take a look at overall items. Not too much else has been picked up. Tome still hanging out for PPD. Hey, did you guys know there's a Pango in this game? Oh, yeah! <laughs> He's level 7 at least. Haven't seen any Rolling Thunder action yet. 
He looks like uh, Fada's game last game on the uh, the Necrophos, right? Where like he needs that big fight, but his team didn't come to play with him. So no one came to re-enable him back into the game. He's in any mage yeah. taking his jungle sack, so he can't even swashbuckle anything. And now he's just going to be stuck farming towards a blink dagger. Like he still hasn't ulted. He doesn't have any kills. He's only died once though, which I, I think is... I mean, sometimes it's worth dying, you know? Sometimes you just gotta be a little moon meander and get your, get up in their faces or something to at least make something happen. That's true. Smoke rotation now from NIP. They jump in on the Jazz, but he gets off a Fiend's Grip the other way. Snowball mitigates a lot of damage as the Rolling Thunder finally gets deployed. Beautiful Will O' Wisp from the Keeper of the Life. PPD almost goes down, survives on just a tick of HP. They have only lost their Tusk so far, but NIP very low on resources. They're gonna be forced back as Fnatic go back to their own shrine and heal up. See, all you gotta do is bring up the flamethrower a little bit and ice will show up. Gets a nice roll through there, combos onto PPD twice, bounces off the little blue crystals there. And had, uh, what, second highest damage I put in that fight, so... Carrying on through. But yeah, as you said, it was only a tusk, but it was the Dire playing aggressive, but at least they were able to force rotations, I guess, and uh, Abed didn't have to join, so I'm gonna call that Fnatic win because they've managed to get their Battle Furies at the same time. All right. Oh, Mega versus Mega, Battle Fury versus Battle Fury. I hope you guys don't have a lot on your schedules today. The mere matchup, the unstoppable force meets the immovable object. And this is what you get. Silence on the Bane. It'll be a tough survival here as PA throws the dagger, jumps in, and Fada says, guys, we're going high ground. I found me a Necrophone, Searing Chains. That's a dagger again. Pound the war drums. Doing what he can, but uh-oh. Doom has the ultimate, and this Necro is done for. They've dusted him. they brought him down. It's a double kill for Ace. Make it uh, another one as they bring down DJ. Fada will get credit for that, but PA erupting off the pickup of that Battle Fury with a couple of kills and more momentum for the team. Great catch there from NIP. Very explosive. Like it all starts with nothing but a pick off onto a Bane, and then suddenly there's a steering change to the high ground, then a little bit of Save Your Buddy Syndrome for DJ as he goes into the, the Glimmer on the Necrophos. And... PPD. Whoa, that's a pinata. One that Abed will be able to blow into oblivion. Now back to the mid. Snowball in on the jab. Does have some friends nearby, but not going to be enough to save him. Now rolling thunder. Abed also making the rotation, looking for a counter kill on Doom, perhaps. Oh knock him back up to the high ground. Rolling thunder doing some work. The silence to follow up, and that'll be the end of 33. Fnatic grab another. Four to six. Still NIP holding on to the lead. As Fnatic clear out a nice double stack of Ancients there. Man, Ice is so good at those angles off the wall. Like... He knows them all, you know, he's just played this hero so many times that it, it's such a stark contrast to people that are just starting to pick up Pango. Where he finds these angles that, like, you didn't even know were possible off these tiny little curves and crevices. And he's able to uh, perfectly combo it into, like, triple stuns like that. And that's where, I mean, we saw the Necro recover last game partially because of Scythe, but I think Pango also fits the bill for when you get sacrificed a little. Just takes one good fight. You do so much AOE damage, it's almost hard not to get some assists or some kills when you're in the fray like that. Yeah. I mean, Ice makes it look easy, to be fair, but I think Pango is well suited to try to make that sort of recovery compared to a lot of other offlaners. And he's just spoke at his Blink Dagger here, too. And of course, a lot of his game was also sacked for the, uh, the Coddle, who they were giving those dead lanes to, where that's typically kind of Pango's job to sit there with Swashbuckle. And he's got some items to show for it. He's got the Glimmer Cape and very close to a Force Staff, just 100 gold away to great utility support items that will help his friends as much as himself. Yeah, he needs uh, the levels too, though. I'd like to see him try and get to 12. I mean, not bad, he's at nine, and then he can go for the XP talent too. Highest of the supports right now, so definitely feeling that difference comparatively. Up top, Ice gonna get bumped into. Swashbuckle away. Jill Crash just coming off cooldown, does have a rolling thunder here. No teammates inbound. Walrus Punch kind of catches him. Now silence. PPD with great positioning. That'll be a kill on the Pango. Very nice. Ice the wave is a little too cocky there. Not quite anticipating that Grim Stroke. MP just running through the river here. <laughs> this guy's crazy. I'll bet in the front lines. Ooh, Fiend's Grip on top of the Doom. He was just about to cast that ultimate, and now Jabs gets jumped on. Willow Wisp connects on three, but the Doom comes out onto the Keeper of the Light. And that'll be three down on the side of Fnatic, including that Pango from up top. I guess they, they thought maybe they were gonna, like there were more heroes up top going for a push or something, but 
that was basically Jabs just like baiting himself because he gets off the the uh, the enfeeble and then he really wants to grip because of the status resistance reduction. He's like, oh my god, I'm gonna have like the longest grip ever. Like this doom's so dead. But uh, unless you're instantly covered by the caudal, it, it, there's no way it's gonna happen. You saw DJ was just a little bit too late there on the will of the wisp. We just got blown up by Ace, who is almost into Deso. Holy. I mean, I guess it's just you accelerate so much faster because the AM needs that Manta as a, the uh, secondary power spike, whereas the uh, the Deso comes quicker. Mm -hmm. And the and Deso done. gives you like, a little more, it feels like, in terms of that explosion. Abed, he blinks in for the bounty. He gets it, but it costs him everything. Now can they get some counter kills? Reaper Sight following up that Rolling Thunder. Does bring down Soxa. And now Doom gets disarmed. Silence knocked back. The Doombringer is on the run. He's fast and beefy. Do they have the damage? TP from inside the pit, a good try from 33, but not going to happen. Man. Ice just, I, I, there were some bad Pango players at the minor, I'll be frank. There were people who clearly had not played this hero enough. And it was, it was pretty disappointing, honestly. But then you watch Ice and it, it really is uh, an incredible difference. Mm -hmm. Nice lead for NIP still, despite those couple of kills. Again, they traded the anti-mage for those two, so in the end, not too shabby. PA now uh, looking towards the BKB. Already has Mithril Hammer Gold. So 2,500 and she's going to be a magic immunity. Mid lane now we're going to see a setup. Jabs in a lot of trouble. Gets brought down. 4, 0, and 2 on this Phantom Assassin. Bottom, Soxa. Sees Ice 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 in the trees. Blink Dagger is up now, so Pango much harder to track down. It looks like Fado's just gonna chipping away there. Outside so. of the scan. Yeah, he should be alright. So he's gonna be the Spirit Vessel buyer this game, right? Oh, he goes for the next wave. The danger plan. There's only one way to go. Okay. I thought uh, we might see a more defensive movement there, there but three on three, cooldown, dude. guys. He knew. He knew. <laughs> He's just like, he, he, there's no way this guy's gone. The scan misses. Oh, no. Look at this up top. Abed, they knew he was going to blink into that camp. They catch him as soon as he blinks, and it's an easy kill. That was a sick bait, dude. They were fucking ready and waiting for that. Yeah, that, that comes from that ward vision up ahead, right? Like near the tower and everything, kind of like spotting these farming patterns. And there is a sentry. They're going to catch this fresh observer ward just placed down from jabs. Good is just holding this tone. See, there's the Reaper Scythe on top of the Illuminate, and they'll add a few extra seconds to that death timer. So, four kills being exchanged back and forth, but in just a couple of minutes, look at the difference between the PA and the Anti-Mage. Anti-Mage yeah. has died twice. PA has just had run of the map and picked up a kill, and now there is a 3K net worth difference. It's going to be four before too long. And uh, so what's stopping them from Roche right now? Uh, the the Will-O-Wisp, pretty big. The Pango, massive with the Blink Dagger. And uh, even just like the mech and the Holy Locket. So yeah, I guess kind of everything. Uh, everything on the side of Mac is really good at fighting around the Roche pit. They just don't necessarily take it that quickly. And then vice versa, NIP kind of have nothing that fights well around the pit. Like Ice Shards is like <laughs> their best ability, honestly. Uh, yeah. And the fact that you have very mobile heroes in the PA and the Ember is also nice, but uh, overall, as much as they'd love to have the Aegis, it just looks like it would be kind of potentially throwing away their lead if they went for it without a massive numbers advantage, like after a big wipe or something. And uh, there's also still a tier one mid and a tier one top. So this often winds up being the problem with Ember Spirit drafts. Um, we saw this a lot of times with the Miner, once again, because there were so many Ember Spirits, but this hero gets picked up early. He gets forced to the side lane sometimes. In this case, he was mid, but uh, you, you often run up with no tower hitters. And that's kind of the, the case here, right? Especially with a Caudal, who's able to hold back for so long. Yeah, no doubt. They do have that Deso, though, so if they get some pickoffs, I think Roche is a possibility, but you're, you're right. They're not really 5v5 like, focused as much as pickoff focused. The, the, their creeps are just gone. I mean, tier ones, you can honestly just backdoor. Like, I'm fine with just throwing the Doom at this. Yeah, I like this. Just screw it. But just look let at this. Doom, Doom get hit. Double damage up top. 
This could be big. NIP, it looks like there's no vision for Fnatic, so they won't see this on the Ember. They jump in with the Rolling Boulder. This is the 10 second BKB on Doom. Drops the ulti on the Necro, and now Snowball on the DJ. MP's gone down first. They're gonna leave the next one alive. Coddle falls and jabs will have nowhere to go. The Will-O-Wisp, well placed, but not even close to enough. And it's a four for nil. The only one that survives is the AM. Pretty much because he wasn't there. So, uh, you know how this whole game, I've just been uh, praising the hell out of the SSA Spango. He just missed one chain on that stun. Radiant so he tower. he wasn't close enough to get the secondary stun on the Doom. Doom instantly pops BKB. PVD hits the Soul Bind. You get a double Doom on the two best targets, the Pango and the Necropos. Like, honestly, the aim just doesn't do enough at this point to even worry about him. And uh, that fight was just over in an instant. The moment that Doom came down. And that, that kind of shows some of the issues with Pango, honestly, is that it, it is really flashy and neat, but you just miss a little moment like that. And, well, frankly, like, who's going to follow up from that chain stun anyway? They don't really have the damage to burst down someone as tanky as 3-3 uh, BKB or not. Yeah, it seems like one of those fights... Shadow that... Blade? <laughs> Say again? He's almost into a Shadow Blade. He's actually the second highest farmed here. I didn't even realize he's, like, above the AM now. All right, he's actually skipping the Shadow Blade, just thinking straight AC. Yeah, I mean, a lot of that early lane was just him down bottom versus the AM. He farmed as well. Now initiation, Fiend Script does counter the Ember Spirit, but he's got friends nearby. Or does he? He'll be the first one to go down after jabs. The pop from anti Mage, but do they have any more? Fnatic perhaps running out of gas in the tank. MP getting very low as they try to commit. They can't quite finish off this Necro. They do get Ice Ice Ice, however. BKB used by Doom. Does turn for a kill onto Soxa, and that'll give MP the reset to at least make it up towards his high ground. Now AM, he's trying to fight. He's doing what he can, but a 1,400 crit brings him damn low. NIP will just back out. Not going to press their luck. There was still a tier one up in that lane, so that was actually a pretty big dive into the tier two. <laughs> Almost the tier threes. But still Aegis on the PA, so maybe a bit safer than it seemed. Fnatic actually get a big gold gain out of that trade. Yeah, losing the Ember, right? Uh, especially the fact that went on the AM is pretty huge for them. He's now starting to claw his way back towards uh, the Doom status here. But uh, PA also has a Basher on the way on the Courier, so perhaps thinking about a couple solo picks here. It's a really good Fiend's Grip from Jabs in that fight to counter initiate on the Ember. I thought it would get interrupted almost immediately, but he got a, a pretty long channel there. And he's almost 12 now, too. Still very poor. Yeah, true, true. But it's a Bane, you know. That's how she goes. Yeah, no doubt. PA level 21. AM also now 20. He's hanging in there despite getting out farmed. Do you think Scotty is the right choice for Abed up next? That's what he's got queued up. Scotty, eh? Uh, pretty good versus the PA. I mean, I guess what else? He definitely needs some sort of mid, mid tier item. Like, I don't know. He needs some sort of like, uh, what's he at? Like, like offensive and defensive item, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Like item that does a little bit of both, right? Because he's not, he can't go full out aggression or he'll just get blown up by this PA or he'll just get doomed. And he can't go full on defensive or his team doesn't have enough damage. So Scotty is just that like middle ground item where like it helps. It's definitely a little more defensive focus, but it also helps a, a little bit in the actual offensive battle. Yep. It just gives you a little extra meat, some buffer against those big crits. Okay. I, I see it. Bane, unfortunately, uh, feeling the fury of this PA. And, um, you know, we have to be wondering, will Ace actually take a tumble this game? This PA is balling pretty hard right now. And with the, even with his Aegis gone, I mean, his burst damage is just so insane. I'd say like half of this Fnatic team is just food against the PA. Yeah, and I guess the other item will be a butterfly, right? If you're Abed, but his logic, I assume, is that, oh, they're gonna know exactly where he is right now. Oh, uh, 3D's not gonna finish the TP. All right. Uh, the other end would be Butterfly, but then he's still pretty vulnerable to uh, the magic damage. Wow, that was a very fast death. Wowzer. On ice, I looked away for two seconds, and uh, Ace is godlike. You know, I, I, I've i said before, you blink and you miss it, but I actually blinked and missed that one. Yeah, uh, yeah. He just he, jumped was... in and full to zero. They're gonna go high ground now. No buyback on ice. He is short gold and quite a bit of it. That's their glyph. This is going to be a difficult high ground defense. Tier 3 has already gone down. Remember, with that Deso, they siege really quickly here. He got hit uh, for 1277. Took two hits from the PA. There you go. Backdoor protection kicks in for a second or two, but not enough to save the melee barracks. Range will also fall, and NIP, they just back out. Tier 2 standing in both side lanes. 
Abed just continuing to farm as best he can around the map. 5k behind the PA now. And just finally gets enough gold for that Scotty. So they'll probably just be content with their one lane of racks here. Uh... Well, actually, they're going to go here again. This is a bit dangerous. Only 30 seconds left on the Aegis. I mean, obviously, he's so far ahead right now on Ace. And not just on Ace. Like, the other two cores are pretty farmed as well. But if there was a moment for uh, Fnag, this might be it. Try and catch, uh, like, a smoke into Ace or something as uh, the Aegis is expiring. But he's pretty well guarded right now by his allies. So also a 10-second BKB on the Ember. Uh, it's... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two BKBs now. Nine seconds left on PA. I am looking at Abyssal Blade next. And they rotated everyone bottom just in case there was a bounty rune engagement. It looked like there were going to be a couple heroes down there, but we'll just end up retreating. And well, Ace, they're bringing uh... the smoke. Who do you kill right now as Fnatic is the real question. <laughs> like... Ugh. I guess PA only has 2k HP. Can they burst her down? It is it is possible. If they manage yep. to get the scythe on her and the AM jumps and maybe with the pango, it can be done. She's killable. I think grabbing Doom is definitely not bad. Breaking oh, up that a... combo for the potential double Doom. And he, he's their big frontliner that's uh, charging in to start a lot of these engagements. They're going to smoke up, actually. She just got her Satanic, too, though. So now she's up to 2400 HP. And then that status resistance is uh, pretty brutal. 30% sitting on her. There it is. Give her an ink swell and let her fly. 200% for five seconds. That's a lot of lifesteal for a pretty long duration if you're fighting against that PA. Yeah, especially when you hit for 1,200. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There we go, right Smash. into the Necro. Follow-up damage, not quite enough, but that last crit will be. Willow Whiff going to do some work, but Snowball again just pulls him right out of it. Into the Bane, that's two down, no buybacks, 5v3. Trying to make this next hold. Now they found the Pangolier. All right, well, that was a great game, you know. It's something else. Pango trying to pull him as far away from his base as possible, but Fada's got a sleight of fist for the kill. The tier two has fallen up top, so they can just, just push just go. in and grab that lane of barracks. Still a tier two standing bottom, though. Not going to be able to get Megas off this push. No, but easy second lane. Not even a worry. Well, I would not fall really close. to act as GG out, honestly, but yeah. I think maybe they'll hold out since that tier two's there for one final fight. I mean, as you've mentioned a couple times now, in that ultra late game, all things kind of relatively equal, AM does surpass the PA. So they can hold out to that point. I don't I don't know how, but if they can, I, I see the I see the light at the end of the tunnel if they can make it. It's a brutal sprint, but the option's there. AM switching up his build. Looks like he wants butterfly next instead of the abyssal. Sitting on the high ground. This could be the opening for Fnatic. Jabs comes walking on out. Does not have a Fiend's grip. Rest of his team not impound. There's the Pango. Abed jumps in as well, but Ace pops the BKB. This is a little bit scary. Snowball up onto the high ground, trying to chase down Abed. The Pango's still here, but he gets rooted. MP's fallen. AM able to blink away. Shrine used by Ice Ice Ice. AM still has to blink even further away from the rest of his team. Oh, but starting Daddy's to feel coming. like a backfire for Fnatic. They jump in onto Ice Ice Ice. He gets destroyed. Soxa blocks out jabs. Looks like he's going to be going down as well. The AM lives, but it's three in the grave once more. Another triple for Ace, and that's it. They call the GG. They know this one's over. Right, Alvin will buy his Meteor Hammer uh, for dignity purposes, of course, and uh, will Meteor Hammer his throne to assist the Dyer in the victory. Well, that's good. Yeah. And after a back and forth game that puts us into uh, to Megas versus Megas, we get a, a relatively one sided affair here. 27 to 9, 3x the kills, and uh, well, about 23k net worth lead in the victory. My goodness. They uh, they popped off, man. I think this Pango just got completely sacked. I mean, he had some great plays, sure, but if he was supposed to be running this mid game for you, that, that just never happened. Uh, um, yeah, I don't know.